<clears throat> okay, the meeting is live. Is that Mr. Price? He's off. Okay, everybody. Good morning. Uh, this is Councilmember Gil Cedillo. We are here at the um, convening the Immigrant Affairs Civil Rights and Equity Committee, a committee that uh, was a product of the leadership and genius of uh, Mr. Herb Wesson, always staying in tune with the issues of the day, bringing forth the most talented people like Peter Shea to help us address affairs related to uh, immigrants living in the city of Los Angeles, deciding that we needed to create a committee that could deal with questions of sanctuary, of uh, discrimination, of uh, uh, immigrant rights within this great city. And so began first a subcommittee uh, and then a committee, full committee in the first time in the history of the city, and then began a uh, commission. And now we're at a historic juncture Juncture in which we will institutionalize uh, this effort. Uh, it's a very key moment because the process of social change requires sustainability, not simply uh, episodic events, but really the day to day hard work that the uh, staff of the city, the workforce of the city engages in on, daily, uh, on a daily uh, level. And this is what we're going to embark on now by creating this. Department. It's a historic. I don't believe, Mr. Wesson, if there's another one in the city with the breadth, depth, and scope of this committee, I don't believe there's another one in the nation that, that combines uh, all these concerns. And so, um, Michael, I'm going to ask that you uh, uh, call the roll. I want to thank you. We're going to hear from the public, but I think it was important as we, you know, are on the edge of a historic election, one that began by attacking uh, immigrants explicitly, uh, one that has assaulted uh, our civil rights and one that has shown um, a penchant for uh, division uh, and not unity, um, that we move forward with this committee today and move forward with this department. I have great optimism for what we're going to do. And so um, I'd like you to call our roll and comments from the committee if necessary, if you would like, and then let's hear from the public. Council Member Cedillo. Oh. Council Member Cedillo. Cedillo present. Council Member Wesson. Wesson is here. Council Member Price. Council Member Price is absent. Council Member Martinez. Council Member Martinez is absent and Council Member Rue. Present. So we have three members and a quorum. We've got a lot of echo, Michael. Can we ask people to do whatever is appropriate so that we don't get the uh, feedback? Yes, and would you also like me to read in uh, information so people could take part in the meeting? Yes. So members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-871-1866 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. Okay, um, can we move forward now with uh, public comment unless we've got a comment from committee members, Mr. West and Mr. Rue? Okay, let's hear from the public. Okay, yeah, yes, Chair. Um, we can start with the public comment now. Um, okay. <clears throat> Caller number 
caller with the number, the last four numbers, 8613, could you press star six to unmute? And you have one minute to comment. Good morning, council members. My name is Araceli Santos, and I'm proud to provide comment today as the inaugural chair of the New Civil and Human Rights Commission. There is no doubt that 2020 historic is a historic year for the world and Los Angeles. So while 2020 brought too much tragedy, you can bring hope. Your vote today will be historic for this city. It will reflect the promise backed in tangible resources to make LA more just. As a longtime civil rights lawyer and advocate, as a Latina, daughter of very hardworking immigrants and patriotic first generation Angelino, I know LA is a tale of two cities. In one, there is promise for equality, and in another, there are too many obstacles for the people of the city to achieve what is promised. Your legacy as leaders of the city is to create the Civil and Human Rights Department. I mean, creating this department, transfer and elevate the three commissions that will bring lenses of gender, racial, ethnic, religious, and LGBT equality and more to this work, as well as discrimination enforcement. And of course, fund the department to ensure its success. Thank you for your leadership and legacy on civil rights in Los Angeles. Thank you. Caller with the last numbers, um, 8112, could you please press star six and you have one minute to uh, state your name and you have one minute to comment. Hi, my name is Danielle Lafayette. Um, I'm commenting both of the Office of Racial Equity and Civil Rights Human, um, Civil and Human Rights Commission will be fundamental for the city of Los Angeles um, to be accountable for, for and address the institutional racism and systemic barriers that have impacted communities of color and black people um, in this city for years. I'm commenting just to make sure that we include the words race equity or racial equity in the name of this commission. Also to make sure that most impacted community members are a part of this commission, people that are from South LA, born and raised in South LA that have a great impact on South LA that should be a part of this committee. And then also uplifting black lives as a part of this committee because um, sometimes that gets lost um, in translation. So we just wanna make sure that that's also apparent in this committee. And then we want to also um, just really emphasize making sure that community members have a great impact on this committee and are a part of the decision-making process of this committee. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller with the last four numbers, uh, four, 5469. Could you please press star six, state your name, and do you have one minute to comment? Hello, caller with the last four numbers, 5469. Could you please press star six, and you have one minute to comment. Okay, we'll move on to the next caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 4447. Could you please uh, press star six and could you please state your name and you have one minute to comment. Good morning, council caller members. Yeah. Good morning, hi, my name is Maya Ferdman. I work for the UCLA Luskin Center for History and Policy, and I'm also a consultant in intergroup relations. I would like to express my wholehearted support for both the establishment of this department and the full and holistic funding for this department. Until this past February, I worked at HCID with the Human Relations Commission, and while there, I saw firsthand how a very well-intentioned city body can hit walls if it's not resourced properly. I also saw the tremendous need for a centralized city body dedicated to fostering equity, inclusion, and human rights for all of LA. I remember the beginning of this department's conceptualization a couple years ago under council member Cedillo's and Weston's leadership. The mission of this department to support human rights and equity is vital to the health of our city, and I'm excited by Capri Maddox's expert leadership to guide it. Yet the department's validity as a body will depend not on its stated mission, but on its actual ability to implement that mission. In order to do so properly, it needs real and full investment. If the summer's shown us anything, it's the urgent necessity for LA to show its leadership and to invest deeply in civil rights and equity for all. 
Thank you so much to each of you for your vision and your leadership. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, caller with the last four numbers, 4790, could you please star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Hi, my name is Alisa Finston. I'm the Senior Vice President of Community Engagement for the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles. Thank you for allowing me to be here today and offer public comment in support of the Civil and Human Rights Department. Um, the Jewish Federation identifies the greatest challenges facing the Jewish community here and abroad and creates opportunities to meet those challenges. We support the most vulnerable in our community, especially now during these challenging times created by this pandemic. We also work to be good neighbors in Los Angeles and have enjoyed a longstanding relationship with the city and city council through various programs. We look forward to working with the Civil and Human Rights Department on their outreach and community engagement and other faith-based unity events work. While our cities are struggling with civil unrest, structural racism, and destructive public discourse, Los Angeles took a bold move to establish the Civil Rights Commission in 2019, and we applaud that move. But without the formal establishment of the Civil and Human Rights Department and the appropriate funding, the critical work to impact discrimination, equity, and empowerment will not be sustained in a meaningful way with the necessary long-term impact. This is a moment in history where we cannot turn our back on those, we have, on those who have continued to suffer from inequities, discrimination, and especially not at a time when the pandemic has further exacerbated. Thank you. Exacerbated Your time is up. Caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 5481. Could you press star six to unmute and state your name and you, we have one minute to comment. Hello, call, caller, go, go ahead. Caller with the last four numbers, 5481. Could you please state your name and you have Can one you minute me? to comment. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Richard Hershout. I am the director of the American Jewish Committee here in Los Angeles. AJC is the oldest and one of our still um, most venerable and leading Jewish, Jewish human rights advocacy organizations uh, in America. As we well know, COVID-19 has laid bare the inequities in our society and our city. And as we've seen as well, a spike and rise in bias-motivated incidents against Asian Americans directly correlated to, their, to the scapegoating about the origins of this virus. So we were especially pleased to hear of the accelerated timetable for creating this most important commission. Our cities, of course, are struggling, and LA in particular, particularly, with civil unrest and structural racism. This is a moment when the Civil and Human Rights Department can send an unmistakable message to the most vulnerable in our great city that there is a place, there is a resource that will push back against the forces of intolerance and hatred. AJC wholeheartedly supports the establishment of this commission and its full funding. And it is never too early for us to begin to caller, put LA on the map up. as we prepare for the 2028 Olympics. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Caller with the last four numbers, 5534, five, could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Hello, caller with the last four, four numbers, 5534. Five, Press star yes. six. Okay, go ahead. Hello, uh, thank you, Council. Uh, this is Robert Hernandez from the Black Workers Center. And just saying, you know, you guys are doing an awesome job, but the whole thing for us is funding, making sure that we have the funds needed in order to be effective, in order to make a difference, because this pandemic and these things that are currently happening can only be impacted when we have the funds necessary, when, when the bill has the, the funds necessary in order to, you know, do what we need to do. There's, uh, it's hard to do something without funding. We can talk all we want to, but if 
if we don't put our money where our mouth is, then there's no need to do or we can't do what we need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 8580. Could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Good morning, and thank you very much, council members. Uh, thank you for the hard work that you do. My name is Anthony Mack. I'm the second vice president. I sit on the Commission of Human Relations, also chairman of the ADA Committee for Racial Equity. It's my honor to be here to speak today on behalf of our commission. And at a moment in time like this in our country, where we've got civil unrest literally breaking out on a global level, we've got mental, physical, and social injustice just at an all-time high, disproportionately not equitably distributed among our minority communities, specifically the black community, the Latino community, the uh, South Pacific community. Uh, it is critical that we bless this establishment of the civil and human uh, uh, relations uh, uh, department to make sure that it has a proper funding to undergird it so they can roll out and, and actually put to work uh, the needed uh, um, um, efforts to represent those those, depart those the communities that do not have the voice or the platform to speak on their behalf. So I'm here to hopefully implore that uh, council members that you will do your part. Honor, your time is up. Honor. To Caller with the last four numbers, 0969, could you press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Hi, good morning. My name is Mariana Magaña, and I will be commenting on item number one. Um, so I, I'm Rep. here calling, representing the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights, also known as CHIRLA. Um, we form a part of the work alongside COCO and AP to advance an office of racial equity here in the city of LA. Um, I'm calling to urge the committee today to include the words race, equity, and or racial equity within the name of the department, um, as this will ensure that the department's name is inclusive of the ORE and is an equal component to the civil and human rights branch. And we know that here in the city of LA, race matters, and so we strongly recommend it be reflected on the department's name. Um, race is really at the intersection of everything that we face here in the city of LA, and so that's why you're here making that recommendation. Um, as we move forward, we also urge that you um, that office also gets the appropriate resources, staffing, and leadership power that is needed to truly address the racial disparities uh, here in the city. Uh, if we fund it and with outlined delegated powers, we know that this office really has the potential to serve the needs of community of color, which also includes immigrant Angelinos, which is the population that we work with. Um, in times like today, right, we want to reiterate that this is highly Your important time is and really for you to not miss. Caller with the last four numbers, 4105, could you press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Check one, two, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, my name is Umar Hakeem. I'm the director for Intellect, Love, and Mercy Foundation, board president for LA Voice, and founder for Encourage. Um, as someone who was born in the 70s, I'm a direct beneficiary of the civil rights movement. Fast forward to today, as a black man, as an African American, and as a Muslim in this city, we are now approaching a need for human rights. And to see these two platforms come together under one roof is a definite uh, force that needs to be dealt with. And I believe LA could set the model for the United States by funding this effort fully um, and including uh, digital rights into this situation because. It is definitely needed. The leadership that you have chosen for this was, would do a good job, and I'm totally uh, looking forward to um, to hearing more about this effort shaping our country and being a, an example from the West Coast. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 8034. Please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Hi, my name is Mindy Garland, and I'm representing the LA Black Workers Center. We support the formal establishment of the Civil and Human Rights Department and are proud to be a part of forming this historic commission, and we urge you all to fully fund the department so that it's adequately staffed to carry out this important work. 
the current Civil and Human Rights Commission would protect against discrimination in LA. And this is critical because our cities are struggling with civil unrest, structural racism, destructive public discourse, and our beloved city is suffering. Further, while black people are less than 10% of the population, uh, where 50% of us are unemployed or underemployed, with 34% of the housing population, uh, and we are constantly being incarcerated and killed by the police at rates exponentially higher than our white Americans. And this is a moment in history where we cannot in good conscience turn our back on those who have continued to suffer for inequities and discrimination. So we support this commission in forming the, establishing the Civil and Human Rights Department, and we urge you all to fully fund the department. Thank you all for your visionary leadership. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 8496. Could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute for your comment. Caller with the last four. Go ahead. Good morning. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Good morning. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Good Good morning, council members. My name is Jackie Fila. I'm the president of the Commission on the Status of Women um, here in the great city of Los Angeles. Um, speaking on behalf of my commission today, I just wanted to commend the city on its efforts to respond to this moment in time, um, this moment in history where we cannot in good conscience turn our back on those who have, who have and continue to suffer from inequities, discrimination, and especially not at a time when a pandemic has further exacerbated these deep inequities with staggering loss of life. Um, we also know that these impacts disproportionately affect women, in particular women of color. I urge you to take a bold stand to first establish the commission uh, or the Civil and Human Rights Department, and second, transfer the Commission on the Status of Women and the Human Relations Commission under the Civil Human Rights Department, and third, and most importantly, fully fund the department so it is adequately staffed to carry out its important work. I thank you for your visionary leadership and employer year sense of commitment to ensuring equity, starting with the establishment of the Civil and Human Rights Department. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Caller, caller with the last four numbers, 9640, could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Go ahead. We can hear you, caller, with the last four numbers, 9640. Hello. Go ahead. You can, you can speak now. You have one minute. Okay. We're moving on. Caller with the last four numbers, 4453. Could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Caller yes, with the last uh, four numbers. Go ahead. Yes, this is Pastor Oliver E. Bowie, Evangelist Mesa Presbyterian Church in the city of Los Angeles. First, I'd like to thank the council president and the council for your visionary leadership and your continued push to make Los Angeles a class one city. I want to, one, encourage you also that you go even further. I'm looking for a minimum of $12 million to be funded for this department because too often these departments are not funded adequately and we've got to come back. I'm saying funded adequately from the start so we can begin to work, provide the necessary staff and support needed, to be efficient and effective at the work that's needed as an African-American male who has witnessed and experienced discrimination. Uh, I believe that it's ne really necessary that we move forward. I hope that we're able to uh, go even further and given uh, Ms. Capri Maddox, which I believe you picked the right person and the best person for this job to support her, her staff and the vision to make this um, Civil Rights and Human Rights Department, class number one. God bless you. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 8052. Could you please press star six? 
and you have one minute to comment. State your name when you have one minute to comment. Caller with the last four numbers, 8052, could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Hello, um, my name is my name is Manju Kulkarni, and I am executive director of APCON, the Asian Pacific Policy and Planning Council. We're a coalition of over 40 um, community-based organizations that serve the 1.5 million Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in Los Angeles County. Um, I'm calling today um, to urge that um, in the Office of Racial Equity and Civil Rights and Human Rights Commission, we it is absolutely critical that we include the terms race, equity, uh, and or racial equity within the department. We know um, uh, as communities of color that it's critical to uh, foreground um, ideas around racial equity in this office. And we know too um, in the AAPI community, seeing what has happened to our communities in the last several months with AAPI hate, how important that is. We also know how critical it is to resource this department um, and provide um, absolute funding to address racial equities proactively, inequities. Numbers nine six. Could you please press star six? State your name and caller with the numbers star six. And you have one minute. Uh, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, hi, good morning. My name is Natal Giraldo. I'm a homeless social worker and I'm a devout member of Community Coalition. Immigration reform, I just must start, by must be recognized by the initial role of immigrants in the United States and the importance of providing tools and pathways for immigrants to integrate into a successful social, economic, and civil fabric of our American life. Our immigration policy should provide immigrants with opportunities for full integration. And um, it is, um, America is a nation of immigrant families. The welcoming spirit of our nation is rooted in the values of family, equality, and opportunity. That doesn't that doesn't mean that we have this point. Immigrants can prosperity to this country despite the fact that it's kept in a legal limbo and despite the roots and contributions to this country that are consistently not being recognized, we need to create a path, a greater path towards citizenship for undocumented members of our communities and more than immigrants are more than just workers. They're my community. They're our community. It is a crucial component for a successful American system, social system. That, 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 that an immigration reform takes place that would benefit immigrants and their families. The, um, the separation of immigrant families is... is, is, is Caller with the last four numbers. Press and you have a minute to comment. Caller with the last Could you please... Our six features a minute. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carlos Leon, lead community organized track community coalition, who is part of the equity coalition. It is exciting to know that this work continues to collectively create an office of racial equity that will be fully functional and resource, we hope. We urge you to include the words race equity and or racial equity within the name of the department, please. Race matters, black lives matter, and it has to be more than a symbolic gesture. And we strongly recommend it to be reflected in the department's name. Race is at the intersection for all groups that face disparities in our city. We also would like to urge you to ensure it gets the resources, staffing, and power needed for the city as a whole to address racial inequity. Anything without funding becomes an idea, and we would like to see this vision become a full resource reality. This energy matters, especially for black and brown communities like South Central LA, that have historically been impacted by biased policies, and we have seen the results today. Our communities still suffer from those systemically racist policies. Our members continue to die in the highest numbers from COVID-19, home eviction, homelessness, arrest, and violence. Poverty continues to increase. Without this equity filter, we will see the negative impact on similar or previous 
Wellington Change Policy. Thank you all for your time. Eight six five. Could you please state your name? Star six. A comment. Uh, yes, hello. Good morning. My name is Sherry Bell with the Los Angeles Black Worker Center, and we need to have this commission fully funded and not just be a paper tiger in the terms of not being fully funded or not naming race and equity in its title. I want to thank the LA City Council for taking courageous steps in establishing this Civil and Human Rights Commission because so goes LA, so goes the country. 2020 has highlighted a dual pandemic of racism. This, this has highlighted disparities of employment, health care, with Black workers being at the bottom. Now we have an opportunity to address this issue in our society and do the right thing by fully funding the commission. Um, and I just want to thank you for your time. I can't really. Thank you. Four numbers nine six nine nine. Could you please? Caller with the last four numbers. Hi, my name is Jesse Ferry, and I'm the statewide census manager with the California Native Vote Project. Uh, we focus on increasing, increasing civic engagement within our tribal communities. And just like a lot of our friends on this call of our providing public comment, uh, we would like to urge you to include the words race and equity or racial equity within the name of the department. And lastly, as you move forward in your decision to place the Office of Racial Equity in this department, uh, we need to ensure that it gets the resources, staffing that are needed for the city to address racial inequities proactively. Uh, your policy is data collection and analysis, technical assistance and training for all city officials and staff, uh, civic engagement capacity building for low-income people of color, and community partnerships. Thank you. Caller with the last question. Could you please press start? name and you have one minute to comment. Caller with the last four numbers. Star six, stage one minute to comment. Moving on. Caller with the last four zero four four five. Could you please state your, uh, could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Caller with the last four numbers, 0445, could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Moving on. Caller with the last four numbers, 1950, could you please press star six, State your name and you have one minute to comment. Go ahead. Go ahead, caller, with one uh, last number, 1950. Hi, good morning. My name is Alexandra Morales, and I'm calling on behalf of CARES and the Central American Research Center. Uh, I'm here to uh, note and highlight and, first of all, you know, ask your office um, for, um, as you're preparing to um, put into practice, you know, our community's values of diversity. We ask that um, as you're naming the department that race and equity be mentioned. Uh, we strongly recommend that race and equity be reflected in the department's name. Uh, we believe that race is at the intersection for all groups that face disparities, that includes immigrants, that includes refugees, that includes our homeless, our LGBTQ communities, and low-income communities, and we want to make sure that our diversity is reflected front and center and the objectives that the Office of ORR is planning to uh, address. At the same time, we've seen time and time again that every time um, that we try to address an issue, and a big and important issue like this one, that it needs the required resources at the levels that it needs in order to make meaningful change and meaningfully represent these groups. And we strongly recommend that your uh, committee take into consideration the level that of resources that it's going to take to put this forward and to commit those resources so that this is a successful model for other cities to follow 
Colorado as well, but at the end of the day to also do justice to. Thank you. Your time is up, caller. Uh, caller with the last four numbers, 3387. Could you please uh, press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Hello, thank you, council members. My name is James Bryant, and I'm an African American, uh, black male, and member of the community. I am calling in support of the Civil and Human Rights Department, full support of them. I appreciate the work and the vision that has been uh, exhibited thus far. I'm, I'm calling in support of leaving the name the same. Uh, we want to continue with the momentum that's been displayed and continue on so we can complete the funding, complete funding, and uh, the establishment of the department. Uh, without the formal establishment of the Civil and Human Rights Department and the appropriate funding, the critical work to impact discrimination, level the playing field, equity, and empowerment will not be sustained in a meaningful way with the necessary long-term impacts. I urge you to take a bold stand to, number one, establish the Civil and Human Rights Department and fully fund the department so it can adequately staff uh, and carry out this, this important work. So continue. Again, I want to say thank you for your work that you've already done. I want to implore you, uh, calling in support to leave the name the same and continue fully, fully fun. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 3626. Could you please press star six? State your name and you have one minute to comment. Hi, my name is Amanidia Norway. I'm with the United Nation, a South Central based nonprofit. Um, that works towards racial equity and youth advocacy. I just wanted to call in and make sure that the commission reflects the future of um, racial equity within LA, which includes youth natives and college age students. Um, in regards to funding, uh, I think unpaid, unpaid college interns majoring in socio sociology, criminal justice, law, and youth and young adults already working in racial advocacy would be a good um, option for advisory or if um, funding is um, an issue. Another topic that I think is important with racial inequities within recreation and parks is bringing in activities um, that most people in LA um, haven't been accustomed to because of systemic racism. Sports and activities like lacrosse, water polo, beach volleyball, Time is up, caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 5469. Could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Caller with the last four numbers. Hi. This is Janelle Bailey from the Los Angeles Black Worker Center. I'm calling in strong support of the Civil and Human Rights Department as named. At a time when folks are out of work and lack access to good and safe work, I really want to applaud the effort to protect everyone at work and make sure this is a true sanctuary city for all. I also wanted to respond to the earlier comment that we might be the first in the nation to have all of this under one umbrella. Um, it's true that Chicago and New York have civil and human rights departments, but they're given the spare due space, not all crammed under one umbrella. Um, when we raise standards for black workers and other protected classes, we raise standards for everyone. So I want to urge you to fully call the Office of Racial Equity and the Civil and Human Rights Department as you establish the beach. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 9640. Could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Go ahead. Uh, I wanted to, hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Atala. I'm a homeless social worker and a, and a devout member of COCO, of COCO Family Community Coalition. Um, I wanted to include my last comment, the separation of immigrant families is a moral crime. And it's unacceptable. Immigration reform cannot be successful until we synchronize public policy with one of the main factors driving our nation, which is family unity of all families, including LGBT families. They're divided. Families are currently being divided by visa waiting periods and processing delays, delays that can last decades. We need as a nation to take greater accountability for law enforcement officials, officials to be responsible for policing our, policing our nation's borders. Immigration reform must address the true needs of our nation's border security by prevent, preventing further violence of immigration enforcement agents and putting an end to the wasteful government 
understanding on the militarization of border communities. In the Congress, I urge you, please, Congress, must endorse that immigration enforcement is responsible. Time is up, caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 3405. Could you please press star six? State your name and you have one minute to comment. Good morning, everyone. Uh, committee members and Chair uh, Cedillo, whose uh, district we proudly reside in. Uh, my name is Joseph Quintana. I'm the development director at the largest human health service provider for American Indians living in Los Angeles. And I want to share our support for the Office of Race and Equity. And uh, this is really a long time coming. Our the group that we serve is a uh, invisible minority, and uh, we share the same concerns as our brothers and sisters across the other minority groups. And we feel that long-term change has to start at the top, and it, it has to come with the people who reflect us. And we think that we're on a path towards changing injustices um, and criminalization of our people going forward. LA has always been a progressive area, and we have the leaders uh, leadership in order to create uh, policies that people around the nation, around the world, that could potentially emanate, emulate. Long term, together, we can ensure that not one more generation will be impacted by inequality or injustice uh, no more. So thank you all for your time. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 9640. Could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Caller with the last four numbers, 9640. Could you please state your name? Press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Good morning. We need to take greater accountability as a nation. My name is Atala Geraldo. The immigration reform must address the true needs of our nation. Um, we create a greater wrong by militarizing. Caller with the last four numbers, 5221, could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Caller with the last four numbers, 5221, could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Okay, moving on. Caller with the last four numbers, 2935. Could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Caller with the last four numbers, 2935, could you please state your, or press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Caller with the last four numbers, 4877, could you please state your, uh, press star six, state your name, and uh, you have one minute to comment. Hi, my name is Yolanda Williams. I work for the public sector for the past 20 years. I do urge you to establish the Civil Rights and Human Department, leaving the name the same, as well as fully funding the department so it will be fully staffed to carry out this important work. With the appropriate funding, the Civil and Human Rights Department can make a big difference concerning racism, equality, discrimination, civil unrest, sexual racism, leveling the playing field, and especially equality and empowerment. We have too many hate crimes and too many people being murdered. Not to have a fully funded and functioning civil and human rights department. Please fund this department. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 3392, could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Go ahead. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Alejandra Ponce de Leon with Advancement Project California. We are co-conveners along with Community Coalition of the Embrace LA Alliance. We've been deeply committed to seeing the full establishment of the Office of Racial Equity, or ORE, that proactively addresses systemic racism and helps transform our city's government culture, policies, and practices to achieve the community's vision for a more equitable and just city of Los Angeles. We commend you for moving forward with the Department of Civil and Human Rights. And given that the Office of Racial Equity will be placed within this department, we also urge you to see that 
to ensure that the ORE is at equal priority to the civil and human rights component by including the names um, in the name the words racial equity or race and equity. The purpose and functions of both the ORE and the civil and human rights are crucial to the advancements of, of racial and social justice, but they're very distinct from one another, and each do require its own set of funding, staffing, and delegated powers to achieve their mission. Both are vital, and both need to be reflected and prioritized and named, and most importantly, how the department is structured. And so therefore, both have to have the funding that is needed to carry out their, their mission. And both need to be reflected because they're both going to be crucial. The Office of Racial Equity will be very proactive in addressing and analyzing policies. Thank you, caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 0305, could you please press star six? State your name and you have one minute to comment. Caller with the last four numbers, 5177. Could you please press star six? State your name and you have one minute to comment. Caller with the last four numbers, 5177. Could you please I'm press I'm here. Go ahead. Hi. First and foremost, I want to urge everyone to wake up because y'all have been listening to a lot of people and I want to make sure I get through. My name is Jasmine Williams. I am a recent graduate from UCLA. I am a resident of Los Angeles, a resident of Compton, California, and a black woman. And I'm telling you that I'm here to tell you to establish the Civil and Human Rights Department and fully fund it. There's no reason to have the department if it doesn't have any money. We need to make sure that the things that are most important to our community are fully funded. This is a moment in history, like many other moments in history, and we need you all to step up and move forward. We have so many things that we need to do with all the inequalities and, and discrimination that happens in our community, and I'm urging you all to make a change. We leave the department as is, don't change the name. We don't have time for that. We need to move now. The time to move and to make change is now. So, urge, so I urge you to establish the department, one, and to fully fund it. That's it. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 5221, could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Okay, my name is Jessica Williams, I'm a student from UCLA, and I want you guys to establish and fully fund the Civil and Human Rights Department, because anyone who's lived in the U.S., especially L.A., has known that there are racial disparities and structural racism, and we cannot go forward and improve this situation without having an organization that has full funding, and we can't expect anything to change if we don't put resources into our city, and with everything that's happened over the years and all the decades prior, especially in 2020 with all the hate crimes and everything happening, we would be kind of silly to turn our backs on the victims of inequality and discrimination. And just like Martin Luther King said in his letter from Birmingham jail, the white moderate is the one who sees there's a problem yet pushes off justice for the future. Please do not be those people. Thank you for your leadership, and I urge you to ensure equity by establishing and fully funding the Civil and Human Rights Department. Thank you. Our last caller, caller with the last four numbers, 2935. Could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Caller with the last four numbers, 2935, could you please press star six, state your name, and you have one minute to comment. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chair, that's all we have for public comment. And uh, Mr. Chair, you are muted. Okay. And Mr. Chair, I believe um, you're trying to speak, but um, you're muted and we were not able to hear what you just said. Thank you. Okay. Is that the, does that conclude public comment? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right, great. Well, then let's, um, let's go forward with the uh, uh, items. You want to read the items before? Yes. Item number one is a motion from Council Member Sadio and Bonin 
relative to the creation of the Civil and Human Rights Department and related matters. This has also been referred to the Personnel and Animal Welfare and Budget and Finance Committees. Mr. Chair? Yes. I'd like to uh, be afforded the opportunity to say a few words, if I may. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. President Emeritus. Yeah, it's just Mr. her. Speaker Emeritus. Look, let me just say that I don't um, know where to begin, but I guess I start at the beginning that it has been an honor and a pleasure to serve with uh, on this council individuals that recognize that we in Los Angeles, that all eyes are on us and that we have a responsibility to lead the way uh, within this country, that individuals from cities, from uh, you know New York to LA look to us for guidance and leadership. And I'm proud of some of the things that we've been able to, to do. It has been an honor uh, to serve with you, Mr. Chairman. You are the perfect person to chair this committee and your actions has, have demonstrated that. We, we are fortunate that uh, uh, Capri Maddox is available, an individual that has a track record of being called upon by a series of mayors, city attorneys, organizations, whenever there is a hard task before us, somehow she's roped in to being part of it. And so I believe that that is a blessing for us. But a couple of things. I have never heard the word inequity used so much as I have heard it this past several months. Individuals recognize that there are many, many inequities. The pandemic has illuminated many of these uh, inequities uh, where it relates to healthcare, when you look at the individuals who are exposed the most, who catch this the most, who die the most. So just because of that, I think that it is critical that the word equity be added to the name of this commission. And I would uh, request that the, the, that the word equity be added to the name of this department. That is something that we can do quickly, doesn't take a lot of review, but I think that it's important that, that we add that. You joined with me as did many other members of this council over four years ago when we created Embrace LA, which was a government structured conversation about race, about immigration, about law enforcement. And out of those conversations came the need to create an office of equity or that word equity became a word that was used with regularity. So in, in my opinion, we need to add equity to the name of this department and we need to get a report back uh, on what steps are necessary in order for us to create an office of equity within the department run by um, uh, Ms. Maddox. Racial equity. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Mr. Rue? Mr. Rue? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Are we going to have a presentation from the department, or do we just? Yes, we are. I'll, I have some questions, but I could wait until afterwards. Okay. And the Mr. only, uh, and uh, I also, too, uh, what Councilmember Weston said, I also, too, uh, heard the uh, uh, the speakers, um, various uh, 
public testimony speakers. Um, I do like the fact that it's going to be a report back because as much as I would love the words equity, race and racial equity into the naming, I would love to hear back from the department and or, or from uh, Capri Maddox department heads uh, thoughts on how we do it because I know we um, and I know we're going to get into it. We have not been able to fully fund the department and I want to make sure that the money is going towards the programs, not necessarily just um, there's a lot of branding and there's a lot of things that have already been done. So even if we add the name in, I want to make sure it's done in an effective way as we phase it in. So um, the money doesn't get spent on, um, on, on um, logistical items, but rather programmatic items. Mr. Chairman, we're not talking about money. We're talking about adding the name equity. I cannot, given what uh, Mr. Roos uh, been saying for the past several months, I can't envision, David, that you would have a problem in us doing that. This is something that I have personally been working on for four years, where we spent money. We had conversations throughout this entire city of Los Angeles we need to uh, add the name. We need to uh, do it now. I have no problems on getting a report back where it relates to creating the Office of Racial Equity within this department, but now is not the time to, to, to stall. Now is, Mr. Chairman, the time to act. I want to thank each and every individual that took the time to call in today. The lion's share of those individuals wanted to see some addition to the name of the department. Uh, you know, let us stay true to who we are. Equity needs, people need to recognize the fact that that's what we're trying to do. We want to create not just a department with the word equity in it, but a society that is equitable so that all of our children can fly as far as their uh, abilities and their imaginations will take them. So this is something that I'm prepared to debate on all day, Mr. Rue. I can't envision that you would not want us to move forward and just add the name. Mr. Wetson, Mr. Wetson, Mr. Of that. Council Member, President Emeritus, Assembly Speaker Emeritus, yes, sir. Your, your position is noted. Uh, Mr. Price. Yeah, I, I was just going to uh, say that I support uh, uh, Mr. Weston's, Mr. Weston's notion. I know that uh, words do matter, words do mean something. And while we may uh, try to be precise and circumspect, I think the word equity. Uh, does help convey a, a state of mind, a state of commitment. Uh, and I know that there's a lot of wordsmithing to be done, uh, but I would support this idea of including that in the name of, our, of this new department. Okay, noted. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Is there something different? I, I don't want to get into it. No, I'll just make it real quick. No, no, I just want to clarify my position. No, Mr. Weston, I fully agree. Your, your um, position's clear. Word. It's not just Go the ahead. word equity. I agree we should also add the word race and racial equity, but I'm just saying I want to make sure we get the department presentation because I want to see how we could fully fund the department because I think that is uh, names and words are very, very important, as Councilmember Price said, but I want to make sure that we have ample money for this department to actually carry out its mission uh, to uh, uh, in tackling civil rights, race, equity, and racial equity. So. Um, I fully agree. I am not in any way, Mr. Weston, disagreeing with you. I fully agree. I think we should um, be as inclusive as possible. But uh, the fact remains, um, I'm a little disappointed that we're not able to fully fund the department at this point, And I want to hear a report on it. And I want to try to figure out how we could get more money to this department to actually uh, execute its mission. I'm just curious as to, is there any cost at all to add the name? Mr. I don't Mr. think Weston, there is. Mr. Mr. Sorry, Weston, Mr. your position is, is noted. Okay. Uh, can we get a report uh, on this from um, Michael? Where are we at? Get a report from the incoming uh, department director, from the incoming department general manager.
would be you, Miss Maddox. You have to unmute yourself. Sorry, Councilman. I was ha having um, a little bit of technical difficulties here. Yes, you were. <laughs> so it's truly a pleasure to be here with um, um, the Immigration um, Affairs um, Committee. I am um, delighted that we have an opportunity to share a little bit about our department. Um, I'm actually going to ask Nicole Bryant to share screen to show our one page overview of our department. I was uh, trying to pull up that document as well. Um, and I was having just a bit of trouble. I'd like to thank uh, Nicole Bryant for her leadership in our department. I wanted to give you a document that you could see and how we actually have broken down the four pillars of our department. And I don't know, Nicole, if we can plus it out just a little bit so people. Yes, that's that's fine. Um, it's really important for us to see that we have um, four four pillars of our department, starting off with commission support. We have the Commission on Civil Rights, uh, which is in the motion to move things forward to change the name of the commission to the Commission on Civil Rights. Um, wanted to back up for just a second to say this did just start with a commission. Um, really appreciate um, council, council members the two council members in particular, uh, council members Cedillo and council members Wesson, uh, our former um, president of the city council. I really appreciate the leadership to even create the commission. I want to move forward to say that the Black Worker Center at UCLA Labor Center, um, along with Peter Shea and others, really took um, a great deal of in interest in moving this commission forward. And as we discussed the commission and some of the, the founding partners, we noticed that there were more things to handle. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we had an umbrella of support in this space. I want to be very clear that um, the commission, the status of women, um, embraces um, our leadership in this space and the opportunity to deal with gender equity. And in addition, we have the Human Relations Commission, which is really um, leaning in on hate crime prevention and community unification events. This commission also has the Transgender Advisory Council um, that has been working again a great deal on hate crime prevention and equity in this space. I wanted to just let you know that we have the uh, outreach and community engagement piece. We'll be working with faith-based institutions, um, our philanthropic partners, neighborhood councils, business groups, universities, and community colleges. We have an opportunity to deal with um, anti-bias awareness training, which is something we're seeking funding for as well, um, along with our hate crime prevention work. We've already done work in this space. Um, as a civil human rights department, we actually have an API hate crime prevention event that is pending. Um, it'll be happening at the end of the month, but we've done events for um, reentry during the pandemic. We've also had an opportunity for us to talk about um, hate crimes, particularly as they relate to the transgender community. So we've been out in the community and we've been doing events in this space, most of which have been related to hate crime prevention, which is really unfortunate, particularly with some of the numbers that we're seeing. Um, since July 1st, I understand that we've had 43 hate crime, um, hate incidents in our city. And uh, they're very disturbing. Um, and these numbers are, are, are growing. I don't know what the all of the LAP stats are year to year. In some communities, I do know that um, we've doubled our numbers pretty much in the first few months of, of this fiscal year. But it's really important for us to know that we are planning to move forward in this space, uh, particularly with some post-election hate incidents that um, people are very concerned about. I want to just talk quickly about discrimination enforcement. And in this space, we have an opportunity to, um, you know, go through the entire, you know, process of citizen complaint to resolution. And this will be what, what we call the Commission on Civil Rights. I'd like to um, really highlight um, a few partnerships that we have, um, but one of which 
we have with um, Pepperdine School of Law that's going to do um, mediation work in, um, in our department as it relates to providing a free service for us. And we really appreciate um, President Gash from um, Pepperdine and the leadership of those folks there for allowing one of the best mediation programs in the in the nation to participate with us in this effort at no cost to us. Um, I'd like to move on to um, our equity and empowerment um, piece. Equity is something that is really important for us. We call it um, E squared. And we definitely believe that equity is a needs to be a part of what the department does. Um, we didn't want a department to only deal with discriminatory behavior, only hate crimes, and not think of other ways to level the playing field. And we will do this with three primary um, forces. And the top three would be policy equity lens, upper mobility programming, and industry diversity metrics. And I'll just talk about those three um, briefly. If we have people who are listening in, we also have on the screen um, COVID-19 equity relief, youth engagement, and collaboration with the Office of Immigrant Affairs, which is something that is really important for us um, as a department. And we um, actually meet with the Office of Immigrant Affairs several times a month, at least twice a month for sure. Um, so policy equity lens um, is looking at key policies. We can't look at every policy, but key policies through the equity lens. It could be COVID-19 response. It could be um, health disparities um, related to food deserts. It could be a number of things that are, that are larger policy um, issues. We can't, like I said, look at all things, but we can just maybe even think of like the top 25 or something like that, um, or even a um, fewer number um, policy issues for us to address. The upper mobility programming is something I'm really excited about. Um, that helps people get into the middle class and beyond. And we actually would like to be sure that we help people with college career readiness, opportunities to learn about careers in STEM, STEAM, financial literacy, home ownership, how to be an entrepreneur, um, and you know, serving our community in so many ways to, to think about other options. And it could be anything from teaching people about animal husbandry to um, moving the agenda, again, to focus on a variety of careers, especially those um, high, um, high net worth um, career opportunities. The other thing that I think is important for us to share is the industry diversity metrics piece. And that actually allows us to say um, to our corporate partners that are interested in making a difference that we want to um, lean in in this space for opportunities for particularly African Americans and Latinos to be um, represented in these um, in, in STEM opportunities as well as careers in banking, et cetera, where we, we've often been left out and we do have studies to back this up. The other thing that I think is really important to note is we've been moving on all of these fronts that I'm sharing with you now um, ever since ever since July, but even just a little bit before then, when we've been working pretty much nonstop. And I really have to take a moment to shout out the team that has um, you know, been a group of volunteers from um, four different um, city entities, as well as some external volunteers from universities. And we do have university partnerships with um, UCLA, USC, and we have one that's pending with um, LACC. Um, we've already also been in a position to have resources come in um, in the name of the Civil Human Rights um, Department to show support um, in this space. And that's something that we are really, really excited about. The industry diversity metrics piece that I would like to just, I would like to highlight one thing in that space is you may have heard on October 5th, um, a press conference that was held by um, Mayor Garcetti. And in this space, we, we rolled out the Renew program. And the Renew program actually addresses racial equity in hiring practices. I don't have to tell you that we have um, um, inequities even with our population that has gone to college, that has 
um, done everything that we've asked them to do as society, but we continue to not have them have, as particularly our African American and Latino um, brothers and sisters included in um, these career opportunities for upward mobility. When we're talking about people that are making 20% less money um, than their counterparts with the same degrees in some of these professions. So the, the stance that the mayor has taken is to allow us to have executive an executive directive 27 like partnership with our corporate partners to encourage them to also increase hiring promotion and pay equity with all groups i um wanted to leave it there to kind of just tell you what we're doing and i know there are uh, there's some questions that are pending from the various um council members but i wanted to at least make sure you had an overview of the department and we can also talk about some of the, the staffing needs as well. I have an organization chart, we have our budget, um, and I also have information about the 75 so meetings that we've done within the community in this space, um, along with some of the media that we've done to um, let people know that we do have this resource out and available for us. So thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Questions for the general manager. Mr. Rue, I believe you had questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, I really thank you uh, for bringing this motion forward. And, you know, this department, especially now, will serve a very critical role in protecting Angelinos from discrimination. And as said by everybody in the committee already, now more than ever, we need to ensure that residents have a place to report civil rights violations and abuses. And um, as stated before in the report and by all the speakers, we know that hate crimes have been increasing in recent months. Um, but I do wanna ask uh, the uh, Capri, uh, the department director, if you could tell us more about how you arrived to the amount of funds needed and the number of positions that you're asking for. Sure, great question, um, Councilman. Um, so the, the number of positions are actually related to the three branches that we need to address. Um, so we have commission support, we'll have obviously, um, and we have four pillars, but we actually broke down the department in um, three parts. And Nicole, I think it might be great for you to, to pull up the organization chart um, so, that they, so that the council members are able to actually see um, how, the, how we break down the department. And if you can plus it out for us, we'd really appreciate it. Okay. Um, how about we do one arm at a time? Um, I think it's really important for you to see um, the resources that we would need as it relates to um, the community engagement and commission support. And then I think you, if you could scoot over just a little wee bit, Nicole, it would be an opportunity for us to see the E-squared piece. Um, and as it relates to commission support, we have three commissions. Actually, it's really three and a half. Um, when you think about the Civil and Human Rights Commission, as well as the Commission on the Status of Women, and then um, the fact that the Human Relations Commission has the Transgender Advisory Council. Um, I think it's really important to know, um, the council member, that there are 32 individuals that make up um, the advisory arm of our department. Um, we are really excited. It's a very diverse group. We have you know, represented representation from South Los Angeles, from the LGBTQ community, from the Jewish community, and I could go on and a Latino community. And, and it's, um, it's really our API community. And I think it's really, um, and even, um, I believe we have American Indians represented as well in um, the, the uh, of the 32 members. And so I think it's really important for us to know that we have um, a, a great deal of, of direction from these committees and we have um, some advisory committee members, excuse me, ad hoc committees that um, have formed from the work that we've done. We have a racial equity committee. Um, we have a, we have a committee that focuses on immigrant affairs, and we have also another committee that deals with um, policing issues. And so we are very grateful 
um, for the the various bodies that we do work with. But that takes um, that takes staffing, quite frankly. And some of the things that come out of these meetings require us to create and develop reports and information. I think it's really important for us to note that. Um, and we think about commission support, that's an arm um, that does a lot of advocacy and also um, focuses on some things that we need in our community engagement piece and our E-squared. And so when we do community engagement and outreach, as you know, there are there's so many requests that come in, say for, uh, we have a perfect example, Francisco Ortega from our office was recently called on to help with a um, spike in, in crime and gun crimes that have been happening um, all over our city, but particularly in South Los Angeles. And so I think it is very important for us to know that we are being called on for community engagement and outreach regularly. And we need to have human relations advocates um, to be dispatched all over the city to assist us. Of course, it, it would be great if we had the ability to have human relations advocates like in every police station, like, they, like we had, um, neighborhood prosecutors when I served as a neighborhood prosecutor years ago, but I think it's, or, or even by council offices, but I think it's important for us to just at least have um, a handful of human relations advocates to serve with us in this space. The other thing I thought was really important is we wanted to make sure we had admin interns as well as opportunity for folks um, to, um, to work as our targeted local hires, and that will be in our ad, admin intern positions um, and our admin clerks, excuse me, our admin clerk positions. We are really excited about having people that represent and reflect Los Angeles and not have to go through a lengthy process to become um, city employees. And then the last section I just wanted us to um, focus on under this arm is the um, community affairs. Um, advocate position and below that would deal with um, E squared work. We have um, an opportunity for people um, to do all the three the three major pillars of the equity piece of the department. And in that space, we would be able to talk about the policy equity lens, um, upper mobility programming, as well as um, an opportunity for us to deal with industry diversity metrics for hiring and to level the playing field. And of course, we will blend um, some of our community affairs staff to help us in the E-squared space. Um, and then I'm gonna pop over to the, um, the other arm of the department just quickly, and I can answer more questions um, in this space as it relates to the opportunities for the, um, the legal arm of our operation. And that's where we would, of course, have our Pepperdine mediation volunteers. And we still would need staff to make sure that we have outreach and education and opportunities for people to help us with intake as people come into our offices, which will be located in um, the LA Mall below City Hall. Um, and as you see these positions, we, um, we have an opportunity to add um, 15, positions to the original motion. And um, of course, we definitely need to have leadership um, at the top of these um, these two major umbrellas um, as we've broken down the department into admin and legal. So we have an AGM that would handle admin and the AGM that would handle legal and handle that operation um, for us. The, um, the other positions that are at the top Nicole, I think if you could just show them some of the positions that we have at the top, we have a legal fund uh, fellow that is uh, will report to me, and that's actually the role that Nicole is is filling for us right now, um, paid for by the Mayor's Fund Los Angeles. We were able to secure funds for that position, and then we also have an executive admin assistant three that is on loan with us currently from um, the Department of Finance. And then if you think about the, um, it says chief management analyst, but it would be the AGM of operations according to some um, things that we have pending um, before us today with our business. And then of course our um, commission executive assistant um, too that would help us to oversee the posting and all of the requirements as we would have with any public meetings. And then the, um, public information director. Uh, um, surprisingly, 
this topic of civil and human rights is um, top of mind in our nation um, now, and um, it should have been up for a long time. But thank you so much, Nicole. You can release the screen unless, um, and we, we may bring it back up for other questions. But unfortunately, um, we've had to do a, a great deal of press in this space and um, to really meet um, Angelinos as they're dealing and grappling with a number of these issues. So um, I hope I answered your question. Um, but if you have any further questions from yourself, or you, happy to do so. You more than answered my question. And I just want to first and foremost say, you know, Ms. Maddox, um, you have really uh, stepped up to the plate. Um, I mean, thank you for that thorough, robust um, planning that you did. And I know you did this literally when you had two staff. I think one or two staff. You literally started by yourself with one other person. Um, and, you know, some staff loaned to you here and there, and you cobbled it together. And I know you now have seven full staff, full salaried positions, which is far from where you need to be. But I just want to really commend you for really, in a short amount of time, uh, for creating everything that you did um, and, and the vision that you have. Um, and I know when this motion uh, was first uh, introduced by, uh, you know, uh, with very good foresight from our uh, chair, Mr. Cedillo and Mr. Wesson, you know, it was a different time. And I know um, it was an issue allocated at half a million dollars. Um, so your ask is a lot higher, but it is very necessary. And, you know, um, I, I think as we transform and as we look at uh, public safety in the 21st century, I know I introduced the Office of Violence Prevention. My colleague introduced uh, different vehicles at the same to tackle these crises that we're facing, especially with not just policing, but racial equity and to get to the systemic roots of it. But I want to say by far, your department needs to be one of the top of mind, one of the first as we reimagine public safety. Hey, young man, <laughs> as we imagine public reimagine public safety, that your department needs to be one of the first department that gets, that gets funded. Um, and you know you'll have my support. Um, I look to, uh, this is a very hard time, So, but and I look to our chair, Mr. Cedillo, who I know has lots of ideas on how we can get this done. Um, uh, it needs to happen right away, but um, you know, obviously, you make uh, lemonade out of lemons, and you know, and I really want to uh, commend you for all of that you've done so far. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That answers my question. Questions, Mr. Price. No question. Just want to uh, say how proud I am of uh, of the presentation and of the commitment that Capri and her team had. It's evident that they have a real spirit of engagement, of involvement, uh, and uh, you know, willing to work hard to get the job done. I think the least we can do is make sure they have the resources to make that possible. But I like the org chart. I think it's a start. It's not really where, where it ends up. But I think it certainly is a working dynamic that permits uh, the department to hit the ground running uh, and providing the kind of leadership uh, the kind of assistance uh, that we know is so necessary in the hospital. I'm very excited to support the, uh, the item as presented and look forward to working closely with you and your team uh, as we deliver these services to the people of the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you, Council. That's what it's about. Mr. Weston. Yeah, well, it's obvious after the presentation uh, it, it, it's not like we didn't already know this. We definitely hired the best person to do this job, uh, hands down. Uh, and, and phenomenal presentation definitely captures the things that I believe are important to us uh, as a city. But I'd also at this time uh, like to uh, recommend that we instruct the CLA to include the Office of Racial Equity and staffing for it using the existing staffing. And good luck to you, Capri. I'll, I'll second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Price. Okay. Thank you. We will hold that. Thank you. And we get the report from the um, CLA now. Who's from the CEO's office? Who do we have?
from the CEO's office. I think I saw Nick Campbell. Yes, Nick is on the line. Nick? Mr. Campbell? He just rejoined. He was having technical difficulties. Apologies, council members. Um, my name is Nicholas Campbell from the CAO's office. Sorry, I had a connection issue when I re tried to return on my video on my uh, microphone. That happened um, to me? So, it disconnected me. Um, so, I'm ready to answer any specific questions. I'm not sure if the council just wishes to know what the costs are based on um, what has been proposed. Um, or if there's any other specific questions you'd like me to answer. Council members, we have a budget that we can put on the screen too, if that is. Yes, can you walk us through the budget, uh, Mr. Campbell, or? or, or um, Cole? Sure, I can walk through a summary for you. Um, I have to connect. I'm actually connected through my phone. My computer does not use a uh, webcam. Um, we can. We can pull it up for you. Oh. Okay, um, I'm trying to see. Oh, those are. Oh, that's a sorry. That's a separate document. Um, let me connect to my computer and I'll share it. Okay. Thank you, Nicole, for sharing the screen. While Nick is getting things up, I just wanted to um, thank Nicole Bryant for being the first person to step on board to help us as a volunteer um, many nights until one in the morning um, working on things. And so I uh, appreciate her leadership, even as a law student at Southwest Law School um, and other work that she does uh, in a full time capacity. So really appreciate you. Okay, can everyone see that screen? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I can provide starting with um, what was approved. Um, so we know kind of where we're starting from and what's approved today um, versus what is being considered today. Um, this is a summary of the budget as it was approved in um, the 2021 budget. Um, it approved seven positions total, which included six positions that were intended to be transferred from uh, the uh, Housing and Community Investment Department, or HSID, um, and that was intended to begin January 1st. Um, as we know, in initially, that was the initial plan during the budget. Um, that changed uh, as of June. Um, expenses were provided as well for as-needed funding to pay for the commissioners, um, and then basic office expenses and startup expenses. Um, as well as some equipment for furniture and computers. Uh, and that came to a total, including furloughs, uh, $417,554, which is as matched in the budget. Um, now, what is being proposed um, as an update, um, this is what we were understanding um, was 23 new positions, as we understood the request, um, and four as needed positions. Uh, the total cost, and we have multiple scenarios, whether you wish to the council wishes to do a six month, seven month, or 12 month co salary cost. Um, the 12 month is really for illustrative purposes. Um, at this point, we would be looking most likely at the six month, considering the timing in terms of approving funding, um, getting it allocated, and beginning to um, uh, hire positions. Uh, the six month cost for all the positions requested uh, would be one point, about $1.2 million. Um, at 1070 or as needed funding for uh, two. Four different positions, two different classes, administrative intern and uh, student professional worker would be another 82,000 uh, for a total position cost of 1.24 million. Um, there's an additional request for 5.5 million 
in uh, contractual services, um, which would fund various studies and other consultant services that would be utilized by the department throughout the year. Um, and a total six month cost would be 6.74 million. Uh, and this is just for what is being considered today. Um, and that does not include furloughs. Um, this summary sheet here shows the additional funding needed. There are certain funding gaps that we've identified um, and will be also reported in our upcoming FSR. Um, these are related to the department starting operations six months earlier than initially anticipated. Um, and also for additional funding to fully fund the department to pay for things like furniture for their new uh, office that is being built out, uh, office space that's being built out in the LA Mall. Um, this total comes out to um, seven, for six months, $7 million, just about. Um, and we have a summary page here, which I, and I can show this as well, um, that shows this all broken down in, by salary count. Um, so I'm prepared to answer any other questions if you have any other specific questions or want more details on how we arrived at those figures or any of the assumptions there. Colleagues? Mr. Wesson, Mr. Price, Mr. Rue, questions? Uh, so, so the six month total we're looking at is this uh, 7 uh, million six? Yes. Two, three, two, is that the number? Yes, sir. That's the additional, that is, and that's the additional amount needed to fully fund um, the department, including assuming approval of all the department's requests being considered today. Mr. Chair? It would, be, it would be a total of 34 positions, um, including the, the seven that um, that we have um, existing with the, the department, the original um, number of positions, and four of those, actually six of those, uh, excuse me, would be coming from HCID. Uh, four of those positions are filled, and the other two, I believe, need to be um, released um, and approved. They are two vacant positions. Um, one is a um, project coordinator position and the other is a human relations commission. Um, sorry, human relations advocate position um, that would serve the commission that is being, um, that needs to be released and approved as well. Just, just to con just to clarify, um, that position, uh, that position authority is already granted. The funding is what's missing. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Um, and four of those positions are as needed positions. So it's 30 full time and four as needed. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Rue. Um, I don't know if you want to entertain any uh, friendly amendments right now or if you wanted to um, weigh in first. Um, I wanted to take your direction. Mr. Rue, you go ahead. You have a, a question? Uh, I, I mean, I, I have an, uh, a friendly amendment. I don't know if you want me to enter it now or if you wanted to um, uh, do it yourself. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce an amendment where um, asking the CAO, CLA, and any relevant departments to work with the uh, uh, Capri Maddox to see um, how we could find where to on a report back on how to fully fund this department, as well as finding uh, revenue sources uh, to uh, get to fully funding the, as requested by uh, the department director. I guess we'll take that as a friendly, although that's our intention this morning is to move in that direction. Thank you, Mr. Chair. What are we doing now? my request for the report back. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Let me ask uh, I'm going to ask for some report backs. 
I'd like to ask for the following. Uh, there's a pending report on the Office of Racial Equity. I would like to ask the CLA, the CAL, and the general manager of the Civil and Human Rights Department to consult and include in that report back into this committee with recommendations on the placement of this new Office of Racial Equity in the city uh, infrastructure and its feasibility to be placed under the newly created Department of Civil and Human Rights. That's one. Two, uh, the city also has an Office of Immigrant Affairs, which is under the purview of the mayor's office. Uh, I would like to request a report back from the CLA, the Office of Immigrant Affairs, and the general manager of the Civil and Human Rights Department uh, into this committee with recommendations on how this office can either work in, consult in consultation with, or more preferably, uh, under the purview of the newly created uh, Department of Civil uh, and Human Rights. Uh, I think it's important that the uh, Department of uh, Office of Immigrant Affairs, which emerged uh, from the leadership of Eric Garcetti, then council member, now mayor, um, it's more institutionalized rather than as a part of the mayor's office, but it's institutionalized as this uh, issue will be one that's at the forefront of our efforts for uh, civil and human rights in the next uh, decade and in, in the immediate future, that it's institutionalized and not subject to the uh, political perspectives of the mayor, but is actually part of the institution of the city of Los Angeles. And so that's uh, part of that request. So that is our motion. Uh, can I get a second? Uh, I'll second that, but Mr. Chair, I think there were two additional, there was an amendment about the report back on the funding too. Your motion? Yes, sir. Yes. I, I think this incorporates that, uh, council member, with all due respect, I think it's. And council member, there were quite a few amendments that um, I believe I was supposed to read into the record concerning the Please. funding. And so for all these recommendations that I'm about to read, they will be attached uh, and added to the online council file. And this will be located at lacouncilfile.org under the council file number 20-0761 by tomorrow afternoon. Um, also, all the documents that were referenced yes. in this meeting will also be um, added to this council file. So these are the amendments. Request yes. the city attorney to prepare and present a, a draft ordinance to change the title of the Civil and Human Rights Commission to the Commission on Civil Rights. Also to delete the phrase, hearing officers shall not be city employees from the definition of a hearing officer as stated in Los Angeles Municipal Code section 51.02. Also to request the city attorney to work with the general manager of the Civil and Human Rights Department with the assistant of the, uh, the chief legislative analyst and the, C, uh, the city administrative officer to fully, sorry, or to further define the duties, responsibilities, goals, and objectives of the Civil and Human Rights Department. And now, um, also, we have um, the following amendments that are requested to be adopted relative to the establishment of the Civil and Human Rights Department appropriate $7,006,232 from the unappropriated balance fund number 100-58, account number 580-318, UB reserve for preservation of city services, reinvestment in disadvantaged communities and communities of color, reimagining public safety service delivery and targeted local hire program to the following accounts and in the amount specified in the new civil and human rights department fund number 100-15 as followed. So you have account number 1010 titled general salaries and this is in the amount of $1,218,024. The next one would be account number 1070, salaries as needed. This is $82,180. And account number 3040, 
contractual services for the amount of $5,500,000. And the last one is account number 7,300 for equipment for the amount of $206,028. This is for a total amount of seven million six hundred and six hundred. Wait, let me read that, read that again. Seven million six thousand two hundred and thirty-two dollars. Next, we want to authorize by resolution the following 23 positions to be employed in the Civil and Human Rights Department through June 30th, 2021 to support the Civil and Human Rights Department commissions and develop rules, regulations, and outreach programs to address discrimination and equity and promote diversity within the city subject to the allocation by the Board of Civil Service Commissioners and pay grade determination by the Office of the City Administrative Officer, Employee Relations Division. So one position would be code number 117-3 with the classification title of Executive Administrative Assistant 3. There's another um, one position Code number 117-2 with um, the title of Executive Administrative Assistant 2. Three positions, code number 1358, Administrative Clerks. Two positions, 1538, um, titled um, Senior Project Coordinators. Two positions, 9248 with the classification title of Management Analyst. One position, code number 1800-1, Public Information Officer 1. Two positions, 9182, Chief Ed Management Analyst. Seven positions, 9207, Human Relations Advocate. And one position, 9734-2, Commission Executive Assistant 2. Three positions, 2496, Community Affairs Advocate, and this is for a total of 23 positions by resolution. Uh, finally, we have one last um, amendment, which is to authorize the Civil and Human Rights Department to utilize the following as-needed positions to support the department commissions and develop rules, regulation, and outreach programs to address discrimination and equity and promote diversity within the city subject to the allocation by the Board of Civil Service Commissioners and pay grade determination by the Office of the City Administrative Officer, Employee Relations Division. We have two positions, code number 1535-2 with the classification title of Administrative Intern 2. And lastly, um, two positions, code number 1502-0 with the classification title of Student Professional Worker. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Espinosa, I, you've said 23 twice, but I want to make sure that you didn't mean uh, to say 27. Uh, my notes reflect that we want to hire uh, 27 positions under that budget of. I believe that 27 was a typo, and it's actually supposed to be 23. Thank you for bringing that up. So I think. I think I can provide a little clarity here. The CAO's office actually allow, um, requested that four um, intern positions would be um, as needed. Um, I do feel strongly that we, we do need support in, in that space for our um, student professional workers and other um, admin interns. I, I actually started with the city in 1992 as a student professional worker at the housing department. So I believe creating a pathway um, for for our next generation of leaders is something that is important, particularly those um, members from underserved communities and communities of color where um, they are disproportionately forced to face some of the oppositions 
that that our department will be addressing. And in that lane, I think a lot of students may have um, to balance ob financial obligations from their families um, and may have to work other jobs that aren't related to their professions and crafts. So I would really like to be sure that we have um, those four intern positions um, and I know we have them as requested as, as as needed, but I would like to see if we could have them go forward um, because we have people who are volunteering from a number of institutions with us now. So the number is 27, um, uh, Ms. Maddox. That is so my the total number is 27 and it's three position, 23 positions that are resolution authorities and four positions that are as needed. So that's your discretion, um, uh, Ms. Maddox. So um, I think we were at 27 uh, as articulated. Right, and and like I said, the, the CAO's office did make the request for as needed, but um, I think that we, we need all these positions ASAP. And I, I see that we have Nick Campbell on the screen as well. Uh, just to be clear, um, our understanding was there, the intention was to be as needed as most intern positions throughout the city are. So that was just our intention of understanding the request. There was not our request for them to be as needed positions, just, I guess, a miscommunication. Thank you. Okay. We're good? There's my... Okay. Mr. Hey, Chairman? Ready? Yes. Uh, I want to know where my uh, amendments are in the recommendation. They'll be part of the report back, sir. Thank you. Can we get a second? And, and the funding, is this dependent upon some kind of report that has been asked for previously? Where it relates to tapping into those funds, I kind of got sidetracked. No, sir, we are making these requests today and then we will get the uh, report backs and move forward. We got a second, Mr. Rue. Second, go I second it. Thank you. No objection. Congratulations, everyone. So be the order. Thank you. We are extremely grateful, looking forward to doing great work in this city to serve our residents. Any other matters before us? Um, I'm not sure if you want to hear my voice anymore, but I do. Would, I would like to um, include a statement. I, I, I do appreciate you uh, <laughs> uh, picking up that last part for me. Go ahead. No problem. But we do have a statement um, from the city clerk about registering to vote. And I just want to let everyone know that today is the last day to register to vote for the November 3rd election. Anybody who's registered by that date will automatically be mailed a vote by mail ballot. If an individual misses that registered, uh, registration deadline, a conditioner, conditional vote, voter registration same day registration is available at any vote center. And lastly, vote by mail ballots must be returned no later than election day, either by mail, by using any official vote by mail drop box, or by taking it to the vote center in the county. And I am finished. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I got my ballot this weekend, and I look forward to voting, uh, dropping that off at its, uh, at its box shortly. Please vote, uh, everybody, and please vote early so that we can ensure that we can move forward as a great city and a great nation. Thank you. Uh, does that wrap it up? Yes, the desk is clear. Desk is clear. Okay. Move Thank you. Turn. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, council members. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, CLA's office. Bye, Felipe.